How you doing? Okay, that's weird. My whole window is like. All right. Well, we're just gonna, um, I guess, close that. <laughs> How you all doing? Today we have a Mustang Mach E, brand new um, type of vehicle, and we're gonna kind of go over it, see what's difficult, what is not. Um, I've already kind of gave it a, a nice once over. Um, we're going to be doing all the sides and the back. No windshield on this one. Um, but there are some interesting things about the windshield and, I mean, sunroof. What is my... There we go. Have you done a Rivian? No. No, they're not around here. I've seen like a couple of Hummers and stuff around here, but no, no, I have not. I've heard they're pretty straightforward. Lucas, DW, Legends, Supreme. Legends with that hot green font. I like it. Where are my windows? Yeah, so they, uh, they decided to, um, they're doing all the walls next door. So like, I feel like they're doing things to purposefully annoy me. I know they're not. Somebody's knocking at the front door. Are you commenting about the people next door? Because they're super annoying right now. Yeah. <laughs> That's, uh, they're literally like doing the walls right now and just like, buh, 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 buh. like literally my, my mic started shaking here. It's good stuff. Yeah. Great timing, right? So it is, <laughs> it is generally very quiet. And then all of a sudden, I walk in this morning and there's like music going next door that's like boom, 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 boom. And then doo -doo 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 -doo. it's like, okay. <laughs> I want to get my 300, my 300s tinted by you. Yeah, let's do it. You can, uh, you can definitely either request a quote through the Detroit Tint Studio site in the, in the description or you can call. We can set it up. Let's say answer the door. Yep. How was the training? Training was good. Training was really good. I had a lot of fun. Um, some of those. I was like super excited for this car and the stream, and then I walked in this morning, and it's like. Yay. <laughs> but spoilers on this one. Um, it seems very straightforward. The only semi-difficult thing is actually getting a pattern out on the back window. You should knock back. Yeah. Let's see. It'll be this battery here. Yeah, I already have. Here. It's, if they got to do what they got to do, so it's just going to be a thing that happens all day, but... Oh, my God. Unbelievable. Um, Grand opening of my shop is next Friday, the 8th. Oh, congrats. That's super cool. Good luck, man. That's awesome. A few people have been opening shops lately. Oh, this thing's dead. What the heck? That's yesterday's battery. We don't, we don't need that. But we should charge it. At the front door. Yeah, they actually, like, no joke, are because uh, this would be the front door somewhere in here, and we don't have one, so they're trying to make one. 
still trying to figure out where it is. Is it? How? Oh. Okay, I'm I'm extra upset now. So this battery, this battery must be dead. You gotta be kidding me. Wow, this is just a total fucked up day. I had this battery on the charger all last night like I did the other night, and then I thought it just wasn't plugged in right. This is the second time now. It's completely dead. So my backup battery I used yesterday, which wasn't on the charger because my main one was, and now that's dead too. Oh, this is bad. Um... What do I have as far as GoPro batteries? Probably nothing. These are the tens. Did they pop in like the Kool-Aid man? I thought he was going to over there because it straight up sounded, sounded like he was going to uh, run right through the door. Get a new one? Well, yeah, I'm gonna have to. That's that's what this extra one was. I, you know, I bet it's the US. I bet it's the USB connector here. Need a third one. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I need like four of them. But this is, oh, this gets so frustrating because there's too many things to charge and then run a business at the same time. So then I pop these things on the charger and then you don't have time to babysit batteries on a charger. So, and then, and then everything dies. I already had spares. My spares are dead. Um, that sucks. How much is one battery? The cost is not the problem, it's just the size. I can't just go get one. They're sitting here. So it's it's the time. So I mean, I could have five on standby, but then again, I have the same problems, right? So let's see. We're gonna have to go GoPro battery style and see what, what we can do with this. I don't even know if these are charged. These very well could be dead. No, nope, this one's basically dead. And then this one. April Fools, guys. Actually, like, legitimately, like, April Fools, I'm doing a stream on this Mustang right now. <laughs> if nothing, if I don't have power, we don't have a stream. Uh, it's a micro USB on the batteries. I don't even think this one's turning on right now. So this one must be completely dead. As far as I know, I only have two, and these are the only two. And these are not charged either. Because everything else is always charging. I, I use so many ports, so. Huh, I don't know how we're gonna do this. Um, yeah, it's, it did it again. It's gotta be the connector then, so I just need to grab another cable. It's either the connector or the battery themselves. I'm leaning towards the cable right now. So it's flashing, like it's charging, but I think it's, you can easily bump it and then it just doesn't work or something. I don't, I don't know, cause it's sitting here and then all of a sudden it sits there flashing and then I look back like a minute later and nothing's happening. So that's a big problem. So the question is, what can we charge the fastest? Because this has power. This one on the HDMI transmitter is fine. Maybe look for a Type-C in the future, which will be more secure and faster charge. The problem is the form factor. It was literally like the only size 
that was that was the issue. So like I couldn't find one that was this size any smaller than this. Hang on, I gotta go look for something. There's a chance that I've got some other random stuff laying around here that might get me by. Um, those batteries won't do anything. In the meantime, GoPro battery is going to get hot, but what else can I do? In the meantime, the other batteries, no, everything's dead. Everything. Cleaned up this place. This has power. I find found something with power. Um, so this was for a camera. And then this more compact, and I think it'll do the job, but it's a little annoying. I gotta put I gotta put a Velcro strip on it though. So either you gotta rip it off of something or find another one. Okay, there's just enough pieces here that this might work. Slapping the phone to the forehead and running around with it. <clears throat> I would love to do that. That was actually the right size. My knife. Is this pre-recorded? Oh yeah. Yeah, we pre-record all our technical difficulties. We put them right on here for believability. Okay, there we go. We got a Velcro strip on it. Oh. Yeah. Okay, this is also fun. I love the media mod. The media mod's so great. I love, like, I, I really like GoPro, but man, a few of their choices are just so confusing to me. Because if you're recording with them, they already don't have, like, amazing battery life. And then to, like, clip a GoPro in an external housing and then flip the legs down, like, and then change it out every time you have to swap a battery. I don't get it. I don't get it. Do you do SUVs faster than cars? Depends on the, uh, the SUV there. And then my monitor just totally... Today's weird, man. I woke up, though. There's, like, our power went out twice this morning. <laughs> it's just, it's a weird day, man. I tell you. 
can't I can't do this. I can't do this. This is the dumbest design ever, GoPro. Does anybody hate the GoPro mount? I I I understand like they need secure here, but this is not fast. This has never been fast. I mean, you just flip the legs down and then screw this on and do, 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 do. In future, will you accept payment in crypto? <laughs> I'm sure everybody will to some regard eventually, but the, the thing is, why? Why right now? Makes no sense. It's just different. It's just more, it's more complicated. It's just everything's more complicated. I don't even know if this is gonna work. <gasps> Boys, we're in business. Okay. So I can leave that charging. You guys wanna know how hilarious prank on myself too? I literally plugged this in this morning. This is my only road. I have to like revamp my whole charging station with like extra cables, extra everything, and like just extra ways to, to charge all the things. This could possibly die too. So that was good. I really need to put, I think I can, I have to choose. So these batteries are gonna charge relatively slowly, but I have lots of them. Let me see, let me see if they're charged, at least give me a status. That should be okay. So I guess the most important thing is gonna be probably this and then this other one here. We will put this on the charger. We will take the GoPro batteries. We will put them on something else so they charge. And then we're going to be good. One sec. So some, every once in a long time, I have a silly extra purchase that I'm like, what about this one? What about that one? And it's a battery. I'm not going to go and return it. So it just kind of sits around and then collects dust. And then comes along April 1st. And it's the savior of the day. <laughs> Without this little stick battery here, it wouldn't, it wouldn't be possible. So... That's, uh, and it's fully charged. And it's been sitting for a while, so I don't know what that really means on fully charged, but it works. Oh, tomorrow is the first. Oh, well, sorry. That's the real April 1st. <laughs> Today, today's just a day. It's not my day. I thought today was April 1st. What do you think of $60 for a full car minus windshield? Do you wanna go broke? There's no money for anything there. You can't even take a lunch break. I think you should add like a couple hundred dollars onto that is what I think. So you could be at like 260. Somebody is offering that service? Nah, I doubt it. Maybe like a couple of doors, full car. 
I wouldn't go there. But somebody, the thing is, that's a nice salmon colored hoodie. Thank you. I quite like my salmon colored. Good morning. I see two more guys doing the same setup as you. I guess you started something. Yeah, and I've helped some people do the same thing too. It's been cool. But somebody that doesn't, somebody near me offers $50 full removals. Like, so an interesting way to look at it is like, wow, I can get a hell of a deal, right? But I think the part that scares me the most about that is like, they don't really res respect their own value. So how do you expect them to uh, respect your car or any other business? Okay, so the Mustang Mach-E, it has a different Ford sound because it's electric. Boop, boop, boop. Do you hear? They did they did it differently. Instead of do do do, they went do do do. Do do do. It's better. It still sounds like a loading screen though. I don't know how you can make money offering Geo for 70 on a windshield. Some people some people take that route. <laughs> You're more entertaining, outgoing, cleaner, and brighter. Well, thank you. <laughs> I appreciate it. How do you keep the new forge from shutting off every five minutes? Uh, I don't know. I haven't had that problem yet. Fords are... Fords you press twice. You're the once and then one more time and it turns on the ignition and usually stays on for a for a reasonably long time. Sometimes they'll shut off sooner if they're a low battery though. But I hope it's five minutes isn't a trend. I guess we'll find out on this one. So as far as all the window seals and stuff, I, I thought I honestly thought it was frameless. But it is definitely not. What's that rumble? What rumble? I don't hear anything. You're crazy. There's, they're trying to play Kool-Aid Man next door. <laughs> it's still undergoing construction. So they came in, they did the epoxy floors. Now they're doing walls, it sounds like. You guys hear the rumble, hear the music. <laughs> I like that. That's cool. I wish they did that with the front door. Like they kind of did. So on the front door, they have this push button right here, but they also have this like little handle here that looks really dumb. You know, it's gonna just collect lots of snow in the winter time. Love it. What's factory tent? Oh, you guys, I need you to go to my TikTok, though. I need you to go to my TikTok and share it. I deleted it and I reposted it. It was dead. It did 7,000 views. I think it was too long. That's going to be the oldest joke today. Everybody's going to be like, let them in. <laughs> but it's so quiet in here when we don't have that awful pounding. Look, see, you do that. That's cool. But then you have this.
What do you guys feel? What do you guys feel about this one? Do you like the styling? I actually like it. So if you don't, I'm gonna ban you. I think the, I think the whole big screen, like it, it kind of fits, but it kind of, these things get obnoxious because they, they're just like, hey, Tesla slapped a big screen in it, so let's just do a giant ass tablet there too and not really put any design thought into it. <laughs> you just banned half the chat. <laughs> That's okay. What the fuck? God damn. <laughs> so annoying. <laughs> yeah, it's really bad right now. I'm sure they don't have much of a choice, but what the fuck? <laughs> you need a hammer to retaliate. We're both gonna break through our own walls. Couple of people wish they named it something other than a Mustang. But what do you name it though? Because it's, you gotta do, this is, this is why they keep remaking movies and why they keep rehashing other vehicle names and stuff like that. Because some of these things have to have some type of like name heritage and, and grab attention. And if you, so if you call it like the Mustang, then more people are gonna be like, oh, did you see the new electric Mustang? It gets more eyeballs on it. Mach-E is fine by itself. Uh, I don't know. <laughs> or the escape. No. <laughs> Although I, I see the similarities. I like it. You're being played live on my stream. Hoss, damn it, Hoss, you can't do that. I, I did that to you yesterday. <laughs> What's up, man? Escape Mach E. No, you can't call it the Escape Mach E. It's not going to sell. Not for the price that they want to sell it at. Twenty two BMW X five, nice. I just did an M five not long ago, but I saw that model three man. <laughs> I honestly thought that uh, that these had frameless windows, but so much of this is so Ford, and I'm very happy for that. Do you charge less for a coupe than a sedan? No, I charge the same. There's things about a lot of coupes that make them just as difficult as, as some sedans. Not all of them, but like same thing for some sedans. Some sedans are, are very difficult and some are very straightforward. Model 3s are fun. Yeah. 
I like the Model Y better. <laughs> Model 3s are cool. The Model Y, I'm like, oh, cool. It's just a straightforward Tesla. Same thing for the Model S. I'm like, you know, I've done a handful of them now, and it's just like, it just, the, just the amount of work that's ahead. I'm like, mm, I'm good with just this one. That's why I'm so happy about this one. It's like, oh, a straightforward new car? Heck yeah, I'm down. Wow, today is weird. I can't describe today, but it is weird. Um, how do you categorize your film from good to better? Well, that's only two. Good, better. Where's your best? You need a best in there. God damn it. Uh, go to my TikTok, Detroit Tint Studio, and you'll see. I do um, Pro Classic, then C2 Carbon, and then Pro Nano. Which reminds me, I gotta send you guys over to my TikTok and then make you share a new video. Cause we're doing, we're doing experiments here. One, we need to get to 5,000 followers on TikTok. That's, that's the like primary goal. And two, the more you share videos, the better they do. And I'm wondering like what the crossover is here. So, and on top of that, in the uh, interest of TikTok science, I posted a TikTok yesterday and then I deleted it this morning and then reposted it, but I made it shorter because I actually was looking at it, I'm like slightly too long. So instead of like 13 seconds, it's now like seven seconds. Makes a difference. So, Canon. Canon! So let me pull it up. A hundred and seventy three views. All right, here. You guys need to go here. Forget this video. Forget this live stream. Go here and share and share this. This will this will bring you here, right? Yep. Yep, that's it. Is that really that long of a URL? What the heck? There. Yep. Do it. Go there, share it, watch it in its entirety at least twice. And then you'll have done your duties for today. So, desktop. Let me pull it up really quick. So this is the one that I posted yesterday. It was sitting at about 7,000 views, which is kind of terrible. Um, looks like it was dead. So I think it was too long, but I don't know if you can delete them and repost them and just change the uh, duration or something. I don't know how TikTok looks at deleted videos or anything, so could have just bombed my whole thing. I don't know. We'll see. 188. We need to get those numbers up. It should be around 30 to 40 thousand for context. That's that's what I think a normal video normal video does. So go do that. Done. Good. Thank you. One hundred and ninety six views more. It's got two comments, 10 likes. I can't see the shares, though. I have to look at my phone to see that. One hundred and ninety nine. What's the method for making a viral TikTok? Make a good TikTok that people want to watch more than once. So be short, be straight to the point or be very interesting throughout an entire video. And then the 
like so if you're going to go for a short one it has to be something that grabs your attention very quickly and then makes one makes people want to watch it more than once and also sharing definitely helps likes and comments 225 let's go here there's the link again do it Going back to work, have a great day. No, go do the TikTok instead. Abandon all work. <laughs> so I'm seeing if we can give it at least an initial push in the beginning, because we've never tried this before. So this one, this last one has done 120,000. Um, some of my earlier ones, they did okay. But TikTok views go like this. <laughs> and then they stop, and then they, <laughs> then they go up again. I went to yours, watched five times, left a comment, gave a like. Thank you. That's perfect. I did yours, now I need the return. No, it's a one-way street. <laughs> We're tinning cars live, man. All right, where are we at? 273. So, and then it should, we'll see. You never know when it's gonna hit, but we'll uh, we'll keep an eye on it. We'll see what we can do. I'm gonna unlike. That's fine, because any engagement is better than no engagement. Welcome to uh, welcome to YouTube. You can like you can like or dislike the video, as long as you feel strongly one way or another. It's better than nothing. <laughs> You got another comment and like, thank you. I appreciate it. Just trying to give it a boost and uh, and see what we'll see what comes of it. Cause these are these are all interesting. These are all interesting experiments to me. So with every video that I make and post on there, they all I'll like retry a theme, change it up a little bit, change the duration. Um, like my longest one is a minute and it actually went on to do really well, but the views were much slower. But overall it was a really, it ended up doing really well. I need to make just a couple more hits and then I'll be able to get to like 5,000 followers relatively quickly. And then I don't care anymore. But yes, back to the Maki. See, you guys like and share TikTok. I continue to stream the Maki. Um, I can't do anything on Facebook since I had to open a new account, I guess, for a month. Um, yeah, so in a lot of groups, mine is three months. Because there's lots of new spam accounts made every day. And I think they now set those in an incubator. <laughs> because it doesn't seem to matter as much anymore. But it probably does on some level. Um... Yeah, new accounts were, were, are a real bad plague on Facebook. So nobody's allowed to comment or post in the group unless you have an account over at least three months old. And there's nothing I can do on an individual basis. Facebook isn't that smart. Carbon blades? Well, they make regular ones, and they they make thin ones. I found the thin ones are really, really good. So the NT carbon thin ones. I hope Sun Distributing is paying attention. 
because they should get them too. I'm like, yay, another skew. <laughs> but I handed a lot of new people the stainless steel blades and I let uh, some try the carbon steel, uh, the thin ones, and they had an easier time with the carbon steel than the stainless. So it's a good option. Good option. Do you recommend TikTok for my barbershop? Um, I think TikTok has a lot of potential for, you know, it's, it's done a lot of good for, for businesses and it's proving to be a platform that isn't going anywhere. So right now, and it has been, like it's been super discoverable for quite a long time now. So the more people that jump on it, the harder it always is. Right now I think things are at the point where it's grown a substantial amount. Content is so short, so a lot more people have opportunities where YouTube, it's people make longer commitments and it's more decision making. So it's a little harder to stand out on YouTube where, you know, <laughs> like I could take up three to five minutes of somebody's time where on TikTok it's like, okay, now we need like a hundred people because everybody's watching like seven to 15 second videos depending on, on what it is. Sometimes a minute, three minutes, five, but still same problems. So they need a lot more people posting. But it's been really interesting to see um, local accounts get brought up too. And their live platform right now is, uh, is massive. They did what Twitch couldn't do. Do a 15 second video and also can you do live streams? I can't tell you exactly what to make, but basically that, short to the point. Um, entertaining, advice, just something that matters. And just have fun with it. Um, you can't go live on TikTok till about a thousand, a thousand followers, and then you can go live from your phone. So, I guess I should hang on to this. But yeah, definitely interesting platform to to focus on. I'm speed running to five thousand. Or at least trying anyways. Yeah, so my wife sent me this one. There was actually a, a customer that posted a video. He was right outside the doors. Um, he got some work done on his, uh, his Cadillac and he was talking about it in his TikTok. I think that's what's another thing that's so interesting about it. It's like, to make something, there's way less of a barrier to making a TikTok than there is a full YouTube video. So you can see behind the scenes from lots of people a lot more. There's just a lot more like collaboration and stuff. Got that, pull this down. Yeah. We got that. Um, drop off, or is the customer waiting? Uh, this one's a drop off. He said no rush, just let him know when it's done. Which is always good.
So we're doing carbon. And we're doing 20 over the factory privacy on the back. And 35 on the front. Nothing on the windshield. He said something about like sunroof recalls and stuff. Um, so I don't know. There, he's worried about having some type of a glass problem and having it, to take it back to Ford right now. Uh, it sounded like a similar problem to uh, to like the Model 3s and stuff where people are tinning them. And, um, but the, you know, this wasn't because of the tint, but he just doesn't want it to even be questioned. So what's interesting about this glass too um, is there is an IR screen in here too. So this actually has um, IR protection on the windshield. So ceramic, I mean, you could put an additional layer on it, but I don't know exactly how much it would, uh, it would do. Sunroof, I have to look at the stamp, but it's not on the sides. Um, it is on the windshield. You guys ever, some of you guys, seen like the Range Rovers where you can tell where the cutout is? Same thing on this one. You can actually see where the, uh, where the IR, IR laminate film in the glass, you can see where it is. a bulb in front of it and check it. I could. Well, I noticed the the red look like the Model 3s have. So it's kind of not surprising. You know, all the electric cars are kind of doing very similar things and competing in very similar ways, which is why like these big screens are kind of silly. It's like, oh, let's be as original as the other guy that literally did this thing too. Let's not try and do something that, that's even more creative. Let's just copy it. It's like, oh, whatever. figured out why I had trouble snapping the blade because I can't do it with wet hands. <laughs> I don't know how to respond. <laughs> do you have customers sign waivers for a legal tint? No. No, and if you do, I definitely have a lawyer look at it. Some can write it up so you're fine, but have a lawyer look at it. Because if you just write a waiver, um, it's actually considered um, what is called an admission of guilt. And, you know, like you basically acknowledge that it was illegal and you still put it on the car. So have somebody smarter, have somebody smart look at it. Oh, that is thick. Look at that. I don't really see that very often. That's where they put the battery, right? That is interesting. Um, as somebody asked about insurance too, I don't know. I would talk to an agent, tell them what your needs are. You're gonna you're gonna want like same thing with like CPAs, smart people, like there's 
I tint, and there's ways to run my business. Laws are different in every state. So, like, while there's, like, broad advice, I would just say, like, if you want to make sure you cover all your bases, just have the smart people that are the professional. Just, like, you know, we say there's value in expensive window tint in the films that we use. There's value in actually paying a professional that knows their shit. <laughs> and that is, a, that is a realm that I don't specialize in. So in that case, is I, I pay those people because they know their shit. <laughs> Waivers are legally pointless. Many are exempt from window film laws. I don't think that part's true. Whether medically, professionally, or government officials, shops aren't required and responsible for qualifying people. That part. That part I agree with. Like, a lot of people that you tint for can just get pulled over, get a ticket for it. Some states require the shops to be more responsible and abide by state laws or there can be fines, stuff like that. Um, Michigan is not one of those states. Michigan is, like, for all I know, everybody that gets tint here has a doctor's note, but I, they don't require me to check. So there's also, for all I know, everything's a show car, and they could just have a trailer waiting outside, load the car up, and not drive it on the road. So from here to there, whatever. From there to wherever they want to take it, that's their own business. Kind of like, you know all those accessories that they sell and they give you pictures of exactly where to put it on the car and give you detailed instructions of how to install it and they have this little disclaimer on that that says, maybe illegal in your state? Yeah, that. That's how I feel about it. Um, oh, no, no, just the part that said many people are exempt from window film laws, whether medically, professionally, or government officials. Um, no, I, I kind of, I didn't read the next part of the sentence, or because it wasn't, it was a continuation. Many people are exempt from window film laws. I thought it was just like a broad statement. I guess that part. So we're going to put the carbon back. I'm going to see if I can plot or cut this back window. Um, so where are we? So we have doors cut. We have doors shrunk. Um, let's get a scrub pad. Let me rinse off a clay bar, too. Highway, highway troopers in Oregon have 20% of the cars. Does it make sense? Yeah, ones here, <laughs> ones I've tinted for and will like to make it a point, they will just say, 5% I'm a cop. <laughs> it's like, okay, it's dark. I'm a cop. Okay, it's not legality, it's safety. I'm a cop. All right. Not all of them, but... I've done a surprising amount. I actually went to uh, went to a place where they outfit all these cop cars and stuff, and it was like they're like, "This is the chief of police's personal charger that he's getting outfitted, and he wants five percent on everything with a really low windshield strip." <laughs> just kind of like, you didn't have to tell me that part, but okay. Because I'm going to do the job the same, whether or not it's the chief of police or somebody else. A good job is a good job. I 
I just got some 2% carbon shield from Tint Depot for a cop said he wants it blacked out. Nice, that'll definitely do it. Let me know how it goes. This is like that in between. Let me see if these get taller. This is like what we dealt with. These get tall. Oh, that is too tall. Oh yeah, there we go. Now I like this. It's like that in between, where it's just, I can do it standing, but I'd rather be sitting. Did you get the hot water working? Yes. Yeah, there was one breaker that wasn't pushed in, and that was the hot water heater. So we're all good, everything worked. So this is definitely, I would say, a pretty standard Ford framed window. No shaving today? Nope. <laughs> No, and I was thinking about trying it if it was a frameless, but uh, laminate. Uh, yes, yes. The front is. I don't think the back are. go. Let's get this guy in here. <laughs> hey, I think they're done pounding on the walls, but they're definitely not done scraping. Sounds like they're mudding. It's not classic rock though, so it's probably a different team of people. <laughs> do you like when they say, how much do you charge for a small, small, small truck? Um, I've, I honestly don't have people ask. Um, everybody here, I swear, everybody here has full-size trucks or at least four doors. Very few have standard cabs that ever ask me about getting tint. They just say that it's a standard cab. So just two doors in the back glass. So yeah, that'll be a little bit cheaper. I won't treat that like a coupe. It sounds festive, I'll say that much. Nice. <laughs> oh 
<laughs> La Cucaracha. How much for a new Miata hardtop with ceramic? Uh, it would probably be six fifty. Five fifty or six fifty. I'd have to look at it one more time really quick. I know it's like a smaller two door car and everything, so if it's similar enough to just a standard cab, I just gotta look at the back of it. Didn't we already talk about coupes versus SUVs? There's there's a couple of special in between vehicles, but that window sounds weird. Listen, you know, I've noticed this with some of the new Fords. It, it doesn't feel like they have a stop. It feels like the stop is literally pressure against the top. Where some of them, like, you roll up and it's just like an abrupt, like, doot. And then same thing with up and down or with down. On some of these, they go up, and I swear it's just, it can't go any higher. But if you held the switch, it would probably try. Some of them definitely seem that way. I got three, I got 320 for one the other day and thought I was gonna, doing good. Well, so, Oh, and ceramic. Is that with the windshield, though, or without? Because that kind of changes the whole thing. There's sometimes I think I'm doing really good, and then I hear other people's prices, and I'm like, oh, damn. <laughs> without windshields. Oh, okay. No, that is good. I do it a little differently. So like on a regular four-door car, I charge 450 for all the sides in the back. So like going into like the realm of like a standard cab, Miata is like a little different. But it still is like a two-door car. So some of these cars take them with a grain of salt. If it seems like it's gonna be like that much easier, then sure, I, I'll give a little break on the price. But generally speaking, coupes and coupes and uh, sedans are are all very similar. Because at least most of the ones that I get are all very, you know, they're they're Camaros, they're Mustangs, they're Challengers. I haven't liked uh, I haven't liked quoting things just based on the number of windows, just like that broad. Um, and also, I don't really like I'm not super hardened on the the vehicle difficulty. If it's like way out of the range of normal, then I'll adjust it some. But for the most part, I just keep like, these are the standard pricing. Sometimes things take a little longer, sometimes things take shorter. So first, winder, uh, yeah, went nice. Real, real good. Got a little, see that? You guys see, see that little 
those are what I'm talking about. So heat that up, press it out. That's it. 15 per window for Lexan sounds about right. Yuck. Up to 25 per window. Yeah, I don't, I'd have to look at it. I, I just, I've only had a couple of people here like, how much do you charge for a back window? Oh, only the back window? And then I give them a price. And then they're like, how about the, the, driver, the driver's rear window? And I'm like, well, usually it's about 50 bucks for a window. But as a whole car, the pricing is different. So if you're just gonna individually ask for pricing across the board, like what are you actually looking for? Because it's really weird to like, oh yeah, only the back window, and then oh yeah, only this window. It's like, what what are you looking for? Then I'll just give you a price. Don't have to like happy meal it, where like you get your nuggies and your fries, and then you order like a drink separate or something and save some money. It's that's not how it works. Actually, I can't even lie, I bought a roll of Cool Max and it's actually pretty good comparable to other name films. Nice, that's cool. That's Cool Max. Nice snow haze outside. That's like my main question and then I just can't choose it. There's too much sketchiness there for me. But if you go that route, just keep a slush fund in case something goes bad, and if you don't ever have to use it, then it's a win. Tip for cleaning windows for heavy smokers. Um, well, you can't use anything that's going to scrape. So you could just have to, like, Spray glass safe, tin safe glass cleaner. So like ammonia free glass cleaner and then start with a microfiber and, and go from there. See how that works. But you can't do, you can't do abrasives. My Audi dude learned that the hard way. <laughs> Gave him a bottle of uh, hydrophobic coating remover to help him with his water spots and I told him not to use it on the inside, and the first thing that he did was take it to the inside of the car. <laughs> like, oh my god. If the car is relatively new, do you still use a razor blade? Sometimes. Right? That's that's my summary. That, that would basically, so the Cool Max has a slight blue hue to it, the adhesive extremely tacky, um, no haze. So that's outside? When you pull it outside, no haze. Um, I'm asking. Uh, film feels great, not too rubbery, tinfoil-like, but the brand scares me because of the price. I agree with that wholeheartedly. So there's, there's lots of guys that are getting into window tint that have not gone through a catastrophic failure. And for that, I'm, I'm a little jealous. <laughs> like, yeah, whatever. I can save money on this film. I'm going to do it. My customers like it. Then, like, then go for it. There's a lot of jaded tinners 
that have used cheaper films or just even good branded films and gone through catastrophic film failures. And it is just such a brand risk. Like, I, I just, I don't wanna take that risk with it. It's just, that's me personally. So, but I also charge more too, so I don't have to. Um, let me be clear, it looks ever so slightly blue inside looking out when pulled outside from both sides, inside and out, no haze. Very cool. Maybe it's getting better. Or it sounds like it. Sounds like it's getting better. <laughs> uh, there's a guy 30 minutes from me been using Lexan for 7 plus years has, said he hasn't had a single comeback or film failure that's good, I'm glad I always take it, all of those with a big grain of salt because I I hear some things from people with software and other things that are like I've been using that film forever and I've never had a problem and then somehow I magically use it and I have a horrific problem. Define catastrophic. When you have a month straight of redos, every car coming back for a complete redo because the film let you down. And so you're just spending hours and hours of time and material fixing work and it just destroys your reputation. That's catastrophic. So even if you fix it, they still had to go through the experience of bringing their vehicle back, dropping it off, and then questioning everything you tell them now on, uh, on the film that's getting installed on the car. Like, oh, that was because of this problem. Now it's addressed, right? And that's actually just the ones that came back. So I have seen time and time again films put on cars and then, you know, three years comes back and the customer isn't even complaining about the film. Like the, they'll be like, oh, a window got busted out or oh, this window's peeling. Um, but like the, as far as like the job goes, it's just like they're used to whatever it looks like. And that, that would be great. And then you go to retint it. And then the film that you're putting on the glass then is nice and new. And it may have sun faded, changed colors by like a lot. So now nothing will match it. And then you retint that one window. Customer gets their car back and goes, hey, why does this look different? And then, whoa, looks like it faded and changed. And they're like, OK, well, then can you redo the rest of the car now so it all matches, please? I've, I've definitely been a part of that. That's like global as well known. I put QDP on a car and it faded within 15 months. That is the first time I've ever heard that one. Damn. Yeah, I hear nothing but praise about QDP. And then when I put QDP, when I, <laughs> so I had to do like a removal with, with QDP. 
and uh, <laughs> and everybody's like praising this film, and like I thought it, I, like I still think it's a solid film, but man, that glue was just such a pain in the ass to remove. Way thicker and way harder at the time. Like goddamn. What's the warranty you give your customers? Everything I install has a lifetime. So basically, if anything bubbles, fades, peels, um, it gets redone. Um, the only thing that it doesn't cover is like physical abuse. So if you scratch it with keys, if you neck it, that type of stuff, because that can't be covered. So as long as you treat your windows nice, use ammonia-free glass cleaners, everything should be fine. If something happens, I take care of it. So that is especially why I don't want to try and save 20 bucks per car and then potentially risk brand new film and all that labor. That's the difference. You know, Rick said this really cool thing on his uh, on his tool talk the other day. Um, he said, he said, no customer, like, how do you say this? No customer is ever impressed with a perfect tint job, or really, like, it's kind of expected. And I agree with that a lot. Like, they can be impressed with your work, but every customer that walks in expects a perfect tint job because that's what they're paying for. So whether it's 100 bucks, 500 bucks, um, a perfect tint job is basically just meeting their expectations. I thought that was a really, really cool statement. It's very true. No matter what, people are paying you for a tint job, they just expect it to be great. So I'm always just, cautious on what I install. I don't want to have any problems like that. Everything else is like good customer service, stuff up front, the way you take care of a client, that's all extra, kind of. <laughs> Is it true that tints appear darker from outside but yet easier to see on the inside along with being better tints? Yes, uh, most of that statement, yes. So this is 20, oh, sorry, this is 35 in the front, 20 on the rear. So when I look through it, like see how it give you context, like it looks really, really dark right now. And then when I go to look through it, the reason is the cabin is dark. So now when I look through it, it's just easier to see through. That's clear in the back. This is like factory 20 up at the top. And then uh, that's 35 on the front. So the darker you go, it definitely gets harder to see out of. But usually anything from, anything from like 100% all the way down to 15 is is pretty straightforward to see through. It's when you block out that last like five, five, 10% that it really starts to get a lot more dramatic. With ceramic? <laughs> no, ceramic has nothing to do with it. A uh, good quality film, um, dyed film, is going to be just as clear, if not more clear, than ceramic. Sunroof on these look pretty easy. Yeah, actually. Um, they're big, but they're not super wide. Um, and yeah, they do have a nice dot matrix border around the whole thing, so it would not be, not be crazy. So 
So I can have light and dark ceramics. I can have light and dark regular tints. They're all going to be the same um, to basically see through, just kind of based on the, the quality of that, that material. But the ceramic part of it has nothing to do with it. You can have ugly, bad ceramic. It's a category. Mm hmm Yep. Yep, that's actually a really nice thing to do. I should probably add it back in. So there was, uh, we would call it the guarantee. We want to call it like tent insurance, but I guess there can be some problems with calling it insurance. Um, but it was basically like 40 bucks. It covers up to two windows um, for any reason, stripped and, and replaced. So if you didn't like the shade on the front doors and you want to go darker, um, if you damaged a window, um, it could it it would just be replaced for like any reason. So it's like one time use, up to two windows, forty bucks. For standard, like 60 for carbon, and then like 80 for ceramic. It's actually a pretty good deal because, um, like, if somebody was worried about getting pulled over and they didn't want to have to pay to have those windows then redone at full cost, like, then get this up front. The only annoyance. With that situation was like we'd remove it, then they would go get the ticket written off, and then they'd come back, and then they'd get them tinted. So there's that like delay in that time. Sometimes we would schedule people like to go get it removed, and then we'd schedule them another time to like retint it. So here, that part would be a little bit annoying, scheduling like individual appointments for that, but. It's a nice add-on thing. I've heard uh, express roll-down. Some shops charge for that, where they'll dry out the windows more, and um, people can roll their windows down as soon as they leave. They don't have to wait. Piled edges, some people were charging for that, or do. They do charge for that. All those little things, those like little like nuanced extra things. Any other company is going to do the same thing. You know, how many stores do you go to that you're hit with a protection plan? Like, shouldn't it work? Well, electronics are like one year after that, you're kind of screwed, and everybody just kind of expects that. With window tint, you get it, and Six years from now, <laughs> like what happened with window tint? So it's different. It's people went real hard into the whole lifetime warranty thing because they didn't have a lot of other selling points. Nice. Gonna remove that. That's the, uh, they do that. Why do they do that? How are we doing on my TikTok? So like take a marker and mark these windows and then they don't remove it. It's that little line. It still does. If I hold the switch up, it still tries to push it into the seal. Weird. No, 
984. Ah, those are rookie numbers. That's nothing. <laughs> TikTok is crazy though, because the way views can go sometimes is like you literally, like within 10 seconds, like five, 10 seconds, you refresh it and there'll be like another like three or 4,000 views. It's, it's just like, it's so fast. So I wasn't even sure if I said the right things in that video. I feel like there's something else that I could do to, to have made it better, but I couldn't think of anything at the time. Hang on, somebody asked for a quote. Let me read it back real quick. Once I finish this one, almost done. I like this. These are nice, easy going seals. Mustang Mach E. Super cool. Um, what would you do for a Model 3? Oh, pricing for a Model 3 is not going to be on the website. Um, Model 3 performance, 15 uh, and 50 on the windshield. So I only have 15 in the carbon. Fill out a quote form and I'll, I'll give you pricing for all three. But the full thing, all the sides and rear, um, plus a windshield is going to be 650. No, that's wrong, sorry. 750 with a windshield. It's like 750, 850, 950. Model 3 is a, a little bit more of a process because you have a really big back window. So we actually have to special order. Um, you have an oversized back window. So we have to special order a roll for your back window and, and whatever shade that you want to go with. Deal. I'll fill out the pricing quote and get it sent over to you. Awesome, man. That'll be cool. We've done a few Model 3s on stream. They've been, uh, they've been fun to do. Very long, thorough <laughs> streams to do because there's a lot of work ahead for that one. Yeah, we just did the, the P100D not too long ago. Oh, that was a Model S, though. That was a Model 3. But we've done, uh, we've done a handful of Model 3s. When was the last time you took a door panel off? Uh, it was on a Lexus not too long ago. Actually, that wasn't the panel. That was just popped out the seal. I can't remember the last time I ever took out a whole door panel to tin a window. order $25 in tools for me. Thank you for this channel. Oh, you're welcome. Appreciate the order, man. <laughs> they do, instead of taking it off the other ones, I will. They do, see this little line here, this diagonal one? Ch -ch. Yeah. 
Yeah, like the IS series is, is what especially gets really bad. Be careful ordering tools, it turns into addiction. <laughs> hey, that's cool. Because then I'm actually doing a good job with them. I appreciate that. I've had a lot of fun. Like, I don't... There's a couple extra things. Actually, one extra thing that I have in mind right now. Um, that might come out later this year. But we've put it... the like Detroit Tin Studio twist on like so many, so many things. It's been really, really cool. I heard Tesla does not recommend adding film to the rear window of the Model 3. Probably because it was a poorly engineered, gigantic friggin' window. So when it absorbs more heat, it inevitably cracks. <laughs> And they've had to replace quite a few of them. Not just from that, but that that would be why they do that. It has nothing to do with just the tint. It's got to be with the way it's designed in the heat. As far as I know, they've, I've never heard of somebody not getting it replaced. And then also, uh, one of the early pieces, the defroster lines were falling off. It's just like, I, they're, you know, I say poorly engineered, but they're trying to do something ridiculous with the glass, and that's kind of what you're up against. You want to design literally the biggest back window in the market, um, cars flex, and, and there you go, you have some problems with it. So, people still get them done because it's window tint, right? It's kind of weird driving that much glass without it. Like, as much as they factory tint some of the pieces, there's only so much that they can do and so the bottom of that back window has to be clear because it's a car. So I'm sure they would darken up the whole thing if they could. That Because they do on like the Model Y and the Model X, but they can't on the Model 3. They made it so big. There's like, that's been the trend with a lot of electric vehicles. Like, and you're seeing it, like even on this Mustang, like this Mustang is actually really nice in how they did it because they, they made all those sides pretty normal. The windshields are a little bit bigger, a little bit more curved. And then they did an overly big um, roof on here that's all glass. But there's no, <laughs> there's no physical shade with it either. Come on. Oh, what the heck is that? There we go. They just make some interesting, like, so when you're in a showroom, I think it seems really impressive and you don't really even think about it. And then you own the car and you start driving around with it. It's probably not enough to make you not buy the car either. But especially with like the Model Y, that windshield, they give you like little sun visors in the pillars, but holy hell, man, it's just too much. There's, there's just times of day we are just like, I don't want this much glare with whatever factory shade that they provide you. It's just, there's times on like our, our van and on the blazer, I've got a nice sunroof on it. It's cool. I tinted it. I appreciate it. But then there's just times that I just close it.
We just sent the rear up to the factory smoke on the Model 3. <sighs> I really don't want to. I think it's it's really ugly. And the only way to make it mostly seamless is to kind of hide it on the defroster. And that's its, that's its own challenge. So, I don't know. Probably not. I don't like that it's all just kind of exposed there. If there was like a clear break, like a nice border line that you could, that you could make it look really nice and clean and flush, maybe. Can you convince Rick to let me take three days off so I can come to class? <laughs> Not much I can do there. You're, you're an essential, an essential employee, unfortunately. You're too valuable doing what you're doing. <laughs> um, Matt can convince Rick to let you do anything? No. <laughs> because if he takes a day off, then your son distributing orders don't get shipped. <laughs> Canon. That was weird. It froze, but I saw it. So we're going to do this real quick. Patrick will now be doing tinting training. I know. That's super cool. I'm so jealous, too, because he's in, Flo he's in like Tampa, Florida, so vacation destination. I wish I had a vacation destination here, but sorry. I just give people like $500 in tools instead. Alex is the backbone of orders there. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, he is. Fortunately and unfortunately. See, the good news is like you've proven yourself to be an essential employee there. The bad news is then you can't go to tinting. <laughs> 23 tinter battles, are you going? Is it on like an island or something? What's going on? I, I saw like a post, but I don't know much about it. Okay, let me see. What are we doing? Let's see. We're at 273 last I refreshed this. I know we're at more, but 273. Oh my God. 1,000. Oh, what the hell? It's basically dead. It's basically a dead video. Well, if it doesn't work, it doesn't work. But we'll have tried, and then we know. Did you guys know you can change your titles on YouTube at any time and it won't hurt the video? It has the potential of actually saving the video. It's in Florida. I know, but he's in like the Tampa area specifically. Like, or like around Tampa, right? Like the nice water side. Oh, so jealous. Hard to do as a new shop, but I'm definitely learning some customers aren't worth dealing with. Usually the lower you go, the harder, harder people are to deal with. There has to be money made in Florida or the South for window tinning. Yeah, it's super big down there. But there's a lot more competition too. So you, you get regular, like, you know, for, for, as, for as many people, um, for as many people here, 
still call about price and look for the cheapest price, right? You get that a ton down south too, but then there's more people that are looking for it. So there's all these these little scales that kind of change. Where's my where's my big glass cleaner? Oh, it's there. Tin season hasn't kicked in full swing yet. Yeah, not quite, but this is like this was tax season, still kind of is. And we would get like huge boosts from tax season, so. But this year's proving to be a little different, I think. But it depends on the day. There's days that I feel like I'm a dead shop, and then there's days that I feel like I'm the busiest shop ever. So we came in with like a lot of phone calls in a full week, and then things are, are still leading into next week. But it's not, I wouldn't call it like, it's not crazy yet. It's up and down. It's busy, and then all of a sudden it's not. And then it's busy, and then all of a sudden it's not. Used to seeing that a lot with plenty of places. Hey, let me turn this off. Whoa! That was a normal Ford sound. What about the cool one? What? Where'd it go? It was, it was going like... Had a, had a different sound to it, not that one. What the heck? They should delete that sound with this car. Boop, boop, boop. Boop, boop, boop. It changed. All right. So we gotta prepare the back window. Let me first see what I got for Software here. Bunch of people I know are still are waiting for taxes to hit. Well, that's good news. Oh, look at that. That's cool. This is push up or shut up right here. This should fit. This is brand new. There's no excuses here. Um, we got a 40 inch roll. And then we can also do, these are the tiniest little quarter windows. Look at how baby quarter windows these are. I could probably print out like 100 of these. little ones. Here, I'm going to do that because I don't want to mess up my, my big cut. Okay, let's finish prepping this. Oh, I need a surface. Oh, I got to clear off the table. So I'd hand cut this. Um, this is really, really tight up here. So everything that I said yesterday is not gonna be quite as possible on this one. So what I would probably try and do differently is honestly throw my film on the inside of the car. I'd cut out what I could. Um, I think, or just do the top first. I'm not sure which one I would do first. But you have all the room in the world to do this on the inside, right? So it honestly makes a lot of sense to just try and get your film here, cut this edge, and then if you want to put it on the outside after that, go ahead, but you could knock out these side ones. You could cut out almost the entire window on the inside and save yourself the headache of butting it up against that spoiler. But once in a while, I'm gonna use the, uh, the tools that are available to me because, I mean, come on, why not? You could put a liner up there and you could Sharpie it too. Yep, absolutely.
But if you're dealing with an entire, like, a, a car with no extra surfaces to, like, cut on, that makes it a little bit trickier. So you can do some finessing and stuff, and you can, you can figure out how to do it. Right about there. Cool. Never have liners around. They're always in the garbage. <laughs> so we did, like, that's my, that's my excuse for today. I, I sometimes will do the more challenging thing as an example, and we've done that with both the Sportage and a lot of other ones with spoilers in the way today. Today, we're going to do the plotter. So I need a glass table to cut that on. And that's this one. That would be the other one that has a bunch of crap on it, but it uh, obviously has a bunch of crap on it. So I'm just going to mosey this over there. We'll just get it nice and close. Perfect. That's good. Let's click cut here and then boom. Little baby quarters. Okay, decide what you want to do. I kind of wanted to just like help it along, but I think I'm just gonna let it do its own thing until it gets to this port. Glass table? Oh, it's a storm window. Oh, this is. Oh yeah, this is in the big for whatever reason. <laughs> I thought this was gonna be wider than it is. It's not. The glass table is literally, okay, so it's really, really simple. Um, not, not the best way to do one, but just a way to do one. Um, there were storm windows here, and I yanked them out of the frame, so I had big pieces of glass here. Then I took um, folding plastic tables and then double-sided adhesive strips and taped all the sides so I didn't cut myself. And then there you go, I have a glass table. But we set these up for the class because I thought we were going to honestly have a lot more off of the plotter and we didn't really do anything off of the plotter. They cut their own patterns. And it's kind of like, I've got a plotter if you guys want to see software and, and play around with it and stuff. No. <laughs> okay. No, it's a workhorse one still. We got to find some time. Uh, to do the workhorse too. But there's videos on it. I just haven't done them. Cool. So we got two choices. We could either pull, weed our pattern now or we could weed it later. I kind of just like to do it first so then I'm not messing with it later. Especially if it snags, but it looks like that was cut nice, so didn't really have to worry about that one. Now, I have a back window. This is a little tacky, but that's okay. We're gonna get this about as high up as we can here. Well, it's still pretty wet up there, huh? Hmm. All right. Let me just change my mind there. 
We'll put it back up there in a second. I'm going to dry it out first. It's just a little, little extra wet under that spoiler. So this is all fine. A little damp in the middle is totally fine for me. Up here, mm, let's just, just dry this out. So when you go to dry shrink your, a window on a rainy day, you can catch a lot of water off of the, you know, you can clean off the glass and still catch water off of the paint and, and whatnot. It'll make your shrinking a little bit harder if you don't expect it. Because all the water's gonna grab the edges. So just be careful. So when everything's nice and dry and floaty, you have an easier time. So going back, making those little adjustments. Is he still wet up here? Son of a bitch. Maybe a little bit. Have you started using DSP on the daily? Not completely. I'm a tinter. I gravitate back to what I know and what I can rely on. But we did it yesterday and it was totally fine. And there's been a lot of times I've used it, it's been totally fine. And then just had that little, I mean, obviously I had too much thinking back now. So that's why it would be extra sticky, treat it like a dryer sheet. Far. <laughs> wow. That's impressive. It basically, it pinches to almost as tight as the thickness of this felt card. Like right near there with my hand. Glass aid and dry shrink prep are the best together. No more waiting for it to dry. That's a big perk of it. Yep. Waiting for it to dry. Dry sheets take longer. That was one of those like little things that I noticed early on with it. Even when I put a lot, it dried faster. Dryer sheet would sit there, especially in the winter time on a colder day, for sometimes like 15 minutes. Yeah, wintertime's big difference. I'm getting lots of little fingers on the side, even with the H pattern, what could I be doing wrong? You're letting the film shrink out the sides is what you're doing wrong. I saw this happen a whole lot. Okay, so true, you don't need an H pattern to be a fixed H pattern. There's a little bit of variance there. But what I did see is like, oh, I do the H pattern and I'm shrinking it. But then you have these little, you have, <sighs> there'd be areas that people would over shrink and it would pull from the sides. And then there would be like this line going out the sides. And then they would start to shrink out the side That was like at least as simple as way I could describe it. It was just wrong. 
you're kind of doing the right things, but you're missing, like, they would, <laughs> they'd tack it down here some, and then they'd get here, and it, they'd shrink it too much in one spot, and it'd pull a lot of tension from the sides, and then they'd keep on going. And then they're trying to fix. There's a lot of shrinking where people were basically trying to continue shrinking. See how this is out the side now? Look at that. See that? They would keep shrinking that. Don't. I like to shrink the side first and then work my way through the middle. I'm pretty similar to that. And that's totally fine. But there's there's things that a lot of people were doing that, that wasn't like right idea. Um, but I was constantly having to show them, they wouldn't even notice. Their film was lifting up off the sides and then they're still trying to shrink the whole part of the film and shrink some over here, some over here. So and it was just messy. And they were causing more problems which then had to try and be fixed later on. Because a little finger out the side is then gonna be a big thing, big channel down the top and the bottom. It just no worky. What now? How can I tell someone to stop talking to me while I'm learning? They've literally been talking to me the whole live stream. Tell them to shut up. <laughs> What's our video at? 1029. Oh, it's dead. It's a dead video. Unless it gets another boost. It's probably a dead tic tac. We got our back window. Where's the button? There's the button. See, it's so, it's just so forward. Everything about this. I like that. Just because it's like a lot of other cars that I've tinted, it's not unusual. <laughs> so for a few weird quirks, as far as everything goes, feels like it's pretty well built. Seems like they're getting their shit together and it just happens to be electric. Sprayer. Let's knock out the rest of this. Never saw a four-door Mustang. You know, that part's a good point. This has Mustang people riled up. That's not what a Mustang is. Good for advertising.
Hey, it got mostly quiet next door. Lunch. Oh, good timing there. Siesta time. All righty. Plenty of room to work with on the inside. Give us a good reason to buy a spray tank before summer. Why would you use anything else? I'm confused, I don't get it. I like to use what I think are the best tools for the job, especially when, uh, when I'm taking it seriously as a, as a career. They're, they're considered investments at that point. They make your, anything to make your job easier. Because what you can get back is time. And especially when you're gonna use it, especially when you're gonna use it on every car, it's like an essential. So, yeah, you can use pump sprayers and whatnot, and I've used them, and they're 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 like they're fine. Tin kegs way better. Don't be afraid to spend money when it makes you money, because then it makes you more money. So I don't always win in those situations either. Sometimes I spend on stuff and it doesn't work out in my favor. Tin kegs is not one of those things. Seems like everything fits pretty well on this one. Can't see any gaps. Yeah, this is a hard edge here too. That's cool. Cause that almost makes it look like, I was wondering if it was gonna gap because of this wiper or something, but no, that's all covered. It just goes from dots to hard line. I don't know, but did that work? Did you buy it yet? <laughs> Seriously, that's a, it's just, it's the way I look at a lot of tools. There's things that are good enough to get you by, and then there's things that are totally essential, totally essential to doing the job. And like we can go back and forth on spending like $400 on a heat gun versus 20. Is that worth it? No, I don't think so. Is it gonna save you a little bit of time? I mean, I would hope so. That's the idea, it'll last longer or whatever. But versus like pump sprayers versus trigger sprayers, um, 
there are people that genuinely like the trigger sprayers. So if you want to go get a trigger sprayer, try it out, see if you like it. Then that's really cheap to do. The tint kegs are, are just a pressure on demand system. You fill them up, you carry around the hose, you don't even think about it. It's just, it's always there. And then they're smaller so they can get into spots. They just make all the sense in the world. You're not doing this all day. You're not pumping up a bottle. I'll tell this little story again, because I worked with Rick. When he, when he first saw, so like I bought a, a keg sprayer years ago, and I said it was the greatest thing ever. And he took a look at it and he said, that's stupid. And he showed me his bug sprayer setup, which was one of those like HDX three gallon bug sprayer things that you pump up and pfft. it works. It's similar. It's not the same. <laughs> but he thought they were ridiculous and they were overkill. And then he eventually tried it and he's just like, okay, these things are awesome. <laughs> Ooh, this looks good. I'm really happy with this. Thank you. Thank you for, for giving me plenty of space to make this window look nice. I appreciate that versus the Audi that we did the other day. Oh, problem with the keg is when first using it, would take me a minute to get my slip down so it'd be annoying, pressurize, then release, then adjust, pressurize again, etc., etc. Yep, yeah, I could see that. So if it's too soapy, it'll be annoying to like unpressurize it, rinse it out and do that. Kind of in the same way, a plotter, you gotta fine tune it. You just gotta tailor it to your liking. And then once you do, you're off to the races. So you could potentially fine tune your ratio on a smaller bottle and then just do some math and figure out what you wanna do in a keg sprayer, but yeah, like, I've had too much soap in mine, and then I have to clean it out, and it's annoying, but I wouldn't say that's not worth getting it. I worked my way from a bug sprayer until I got the money for a keg. And how do you like the keg versus the bug sprayer? You can be honest. If it's not for you, it's not for you. Yeah, Maki's, uh, they are very straightforward. Um, we haven't done the windshield, but even the windshield, it doesn't look like anything outlandish. You could see on the, on the windscreen, this is, I don't know why they do this, but there's, uh, there's a film laminated in between, in between the glass, and I might be able to angle it right so you can see it, but they cut it shy here, like shh, shh. For whatever reason, they don't cover this dot area with the IR screen here, just like on all the Range Rovers. I don't know why they do that. I call it lazy, but I'm sure Engineer has a reason for it. Maybe he also was lazy. Multiplying the ratio makes sense. I'm honestly not big enough for a keg yet. Solution would sit too long before getting used up. That's fair. You'll have more water sitting there longer. You can get a couple days out of it, but yeah. I won't fill it up completely either. Um, at least that's what I was doing for the five gallon keg. Five gallon keg, it was like, I'd use like half the water in there in a day. And then the rest of it would sit. So I'd change and use far more soap with a five gallon. But yeah, if you're not tinning as much, you don't even have to fill it as much. Oh, come on. There we go. 
But that's a fair point. I don't think about that. Can you show us with the meter? Uh, maybe? We can try it? Let me see if I have, I think I bought a housing. So there should be a way we can do it. You guys are opening a weird can of worms though, I'll tell you. I mess around with the meter on a lot of, a lot of glass and I don't fully understand it. <laughs> I don't think the meter that I'm using is telling the full story, but I think it gives you a good picture. So what I've noticed is I'll put my hand in front of that heat lamp and Basically, when I translate that to outside, I will feel a difference. It's like, it's pretty accurate. Whatever that bulb feels like, go outside the film, it's very, very similar. So if something performs well, it's, gen it's gonna feel great on the car. The meter sometimes gives me different numbers than what I feel. But it's a BTU meter. <laughs> look, at the, look at this little baby quarter. A little baby window. I'm thankful. I'm glad they give me so much space, though, with it. But look at this little guy. And then just... Doo -doo -doo -doo. <laughs> it's so tiny. Even the paneling is all kind of like... It's a little skewed over. But it's uh, it's good enough. I'm gonna let that sit there for a minute so it has a chance to tack up before I try and squeegee it. Oh, I won't do it for long. It's just like a heat gun. You can put it on there, but just don't let it sit there for like in any one spot for a long time, it would be totally fine. We don't really have, we don't really have, I can check, but I don't think we really have sun right now. It's super windy and like rainy-ish outside, so I don't think we have it. I'll check. No, I wanna do the meter with the, uh, with the bulb. They seem very sensitive, no much how the, seem very sensitive, no much how much the numbers can move in the meter when you move it an inch. Yeah, well, so it's BTUs, and so your heat changes pretty dramatically from like here to even here. What you feel here, and then you get closer, you get closer, it gets hotter, it gets hotter. Um, they kind of read based off a of distance. But what I'm talking about is there are films that I would keep the meter at the same spot just change the film and then the numbers would be didn't quite seem accurate to what I was feeling so I really like the BTU meter for a lot of demonstrations it's a really clear cut example and like here you go but then I've done it with like taking that same and putting it on car glass. And then it metered very differently on the car glass versus just the, the other glass, but there we go. Ugh. Oh no, we're dead. <sighs> Cannon. We don't have much time. That's a good battery. This one's got one, one left too. I, I, it's going to be a little bit messy here. Beautiful.
GoPro. No, <laughs> what the fuck? Cannon. Why? That doesn't make sense. Nothing died. All right, let's do it again. Just disconnected. Come on, load. Oh, ah, it's a 1-800 number. That's uh, actually it looks like DTE, probably because all the outages. All right, we're good. Let's continue. Let's finish up these quarters. What's DIY tent you suggest? Check out Tent Depot. There's that. There's the one. And then we'll do this one. It's good to have these sitting in one place for just a little bit of time, because then you can make sure that they're all squeegeed out and tacked up. So would be sitting here for like a minute or two trying to get that in place. It's slide around on me. So it'll be easier to do this with like the, actually I don't know. You gotta keep things at like the same distance and whatnot so so if I put a meter here and then I put the bulb here the distance is going to change how much that meter reacts but if it doesn't react much at all then it'll be pretty good I gotta see if I have something though I was looking all day for nails I don't know where I put my nails this thing I did bring one that's cool. Oh, I'm not done yet, but my play button is up on the wall. So that's what it looks like for now. See how little it is on a wall? It's like, oh, but it looks cool. So I'm pretty proud of that. sure this will work. There we go. There's mm, my meter. Uh, No! Where's that? Because I can't do this any other way. We, we had a fix for this.
All right, we're going to have to go into it with no audio, just for the sake of numbers, so visuals. It's just going to be how it is. I, had a, I don't know where my, or is that this? No. I had a USB-C to USB-C cable. We cleaned up everything, and, and cleaning up everything means that I don't know where I put anything. Just kidding. I found it. <laughs> how many cards do you do in a day? Uh, depends on the day. This week I've been doing one a day. I've been having fun streaming. Watch, watch this MacGyver shit right here. There we go. We just gotta do this. I found it. I know they're not far. It's, it's like I'm not blaming cleaning, it's just things that I leave in a place and then I kind of like blow through and pick everything up and then I drop something somewhere and I don't know where I put stuff. Okay, do we have, we do. Okay. The, the meter is flashing, so it's probably getting close to dying too. Wow. Oh, dang, that's nice. Yeah, I don't feel anything. Nope, you got a good IR coating there. So we're like two. That's solid. Really, really good. Really good, because I can feel this, and the thing is, on like front doors and stuff, you still should be able, I can feel some heat coming through. So we're at about 135, like really, really close. I can feel a little bit of heat coming in. So like for, for context here, distance is definitely gonna matter, but like really, really close proximity here should give me a pretty high number. Cause without it, like look, see, 500, high, 300, like it, we're just blowing the meter out. And then we go here, and then it's 150. We go to um, a full IR windshield, two to three, like we got like nothing on here. So that's, that's super, super good. But they don't, they obviously don't do it on the sides. So we went with the carbon on this one. And so we're still reading. Ooh, it's better on the factory, look at that. Oh, this is also 20. As well. So that's 35 in the front, 20 over the factory on the back. So 20 is going to be a little bit better. So we're about like 30 or so. I can still feel a little bit of heat coming through. And as far as this goes, I can feel a little bit more coming through. So it, it's hard to put numbers, give numbers like physical context. Um, Cause like, oh, 100, that's, that's a lot, right? Eh, not necessarily. Cause I can get 100 from all the way back here. So mm, 500, 600. So like even 100 is pretty low. So doing pretty good on this one. Maybe I'll just keep this handy and we can try it on more cars, especially when we do like ceramics and stuff. So you can see a clear difference between that windshield, the carbon that's on the sides with the factory glass, and then even the dyed with uh, a little darker carbon on the back. Good stuff, I'm glad we did that. See, it was worth the struggle. We'll keep this handy. And then we'll, I think we'll keep this handy and do that from time to time and get some ideas with some different films on some different windows and some different shades. They are having a straight up fiesta next door. Well, I know I'm gonna order some batteries and uh, Make sure everything is good from now on. Let me shut this door too. We don't look back here. This is the this is the 
messy room. It's happy hour. <laughs> Lunchtime happy hour. Yeah, the IR screens that they put in some of these cars, I mean, they've had, they have this like interesting red iridescent to them. Some of them have seemed a little bit on the reflective sides. I would expect them to be pretty damn good. But from a cost perspective, too, and just the types of windows that you get, like what you're legally required to do. So you'll see laminated on the front windshield. There's laminated on the back or on the front doors as well. These rear ones are typically tempered. And then same thing for the back windows. Like back windows are always tempered. So they'll probably do a couple little comfort things for the driver and passenger and then lessen it up for the back of it. But it's not going to be on probably the vast majority of vehicles. It's going to be a premium thing. It's going to be an expensive thing to replace because, you know, if that windshield gets busted and you're replacing it with the factory IR screen windshield, just like the Ford sound screen windshield, they're going to be expensive. They're going to be very expensive. Is there any glass shift on those cars? Yeah, a little bit. Yeah, I saw it on both the front and the back. They both shifted a little bit. Good old Ford. That's what they do. But I don't know. There's a lot to like about this. I like this. I saw some videos owning one, though, or like driving one around for farther. and. Like Tesla's got a really good, or at least the, I guess one of the best infrastructures for charging your cars across the state, multiple states, and, uh, and some of these like universal charging stations, they get beat to hell and they're just not compatible and you can find yourself going to like three of them before you can charge your car. That would definitely uh, really piss me off. Glass shift. Um, when I roll the window down, like wiggle in between that seal. So sometimes when you roll it down, they'll shift a little one way. You roll it back up, it'll shift back the other way. So there's a little play in those seals. Unless he was just talking about something entirely different. This looks good, though. So this is 20 um, over the factory on the rear, 35 on the front. And then the mirrors that just auto locked. Cool. That's it. Where's my coffee? We like limped by on this stream <laughs> with some of it. It's just little thing after little thing. <sighs> well, at least my battery is charging, so I gotta make sure I get a couple USB C or USB USB B Canon. Look at this. Look at this cable here. I totally forgot until this mic died that I can actually charge it off of this while it's going. But this, unfortunately, isn't enough power. That would have been the best. If I could have just plugged this cable into here and then power the GoPro, I wanna tr I'm gonna try it again, but it, I don't think it's gonna work. That would have been the best. Too low. I'm so sad. Because if this battery could have powered it, then I can get rid of the top battery entirely. Just not powerful enough. But anyways.
Let's, uh, let's see. Where are we at? What's TikTok doing? 1,082. Oh, it's so dead. Our sharing. Only one person shared it. I'm, I'm, you guys, you guys are disappointing today. You're supposed to share it. I think Cash was the only person that shared it. What the hell? Pulling out the IR meter and everything. We're trying to bump a TikTok back into uh, popularity here. Desktop. I don't have it. Well, then get it. <laughs> I don't have it. Can't do anything. No, you can literally share it on other platforms. Uh, sorry, I don't have it. What do you tell your customers? Sorry, I can't do it. I don't have it. There's, that's poor excuse for this. My kids do. I'll ask them to share it. <laughs> I watched it repeatedly. Thank you. I gave you a like. No TikTok. <laughs> well, just know that I'm disappointed. And you can live with that. Oh. <sighs> What a day. No, I wasn't, I wasn't sure what it would be able to do, but I know that I think it needed to be, sh at least I feel like it should have been shorter from the very beginning. So first time it did 1,000. No, first time it did 7,000. So I shortened it up. And we'll see if we get a boost later on today or something. But I think it's pretty dead. Try a montage on that triple five video. Yeah, exactly. Just like your parents. Well, just know we're disappointed. Um, I have a I have a couple videos that I I could probably tailor off of YouTube to be uh, to be TikToks. Um, dang, Maki, do you like it? Nice interior quality? Yeah, it seems pretty cool. The, uh, what, what's the, what's the MSRP on this thing? MSRP. 43? Oh, yeah. What the hell? Really? It's only 43? like starts at, so you'd probably be spending like 55 to 60 on it. Oh yeah, that's not bad. That's not bad at all for what you get out of this thing. That's competitive. I like the look, I like the styling on it. And uh, everything as far as, as far as a tinter perspective goes, really straightforward. Top line's over 65, yeah, makes sense. My Toyota van, way better than an electric car. I'm, pr I'm pretty fond of my, uh, my Sienna as well. It's 65K for performance. Well, yeah, with all these electric cars, you definitely have to be concerned about long-term batteries. I, you just charge, goes dead, charge, goes dead. A, a car like this, I wouldn't, I wouldn't be buying for that. Like, some people are weird about their electric cars. Like, I'm going to buy an electric car, and this is going to be my future car forever. Most people don't keep their regular cars that long. They lease them. So I'd be more than happy to lease something like this, drive it for two to three years, and then swap it out for whatever the next version is.
everyone leases cars in Michigan. They're super cheap to lease compared to buying. It still depends on what it is. You can spend a lot on a lease, but yeah, some things you can definitely save a lot of money on too. What's your favorite? Um, with all the cars you tinted, which one would you buy? The one that comes to mind just offhand, ugh, but there's some things that, that are really annoying from it. It depends on what I'm using it for, but I really like the IS500. I think the IS500 was super cool. It had the shittiest backup camera. I was so annoyed. I've seen this on the 22 Camrys, my 22 Sienna van, and the IS500. They have shitty old looking cameras on brand new vehicles, and it's garbage. But I like the IS500 quite a lot. It looks super cool. Got to lease that boy, return it before a battery issue anyways. 100%. Mm-hmm. And that's the, like, that's the way a lot of people treat vehicles. We would all love them to last forever, but three to five years, I'm, I'm kind of itching to get into a different vehicle. <laughs> I've taken my Model 3 on numerous thousand mile trips. Model 3s make sense. Like Tesla's got good infrastructure for that. You still gotta wait like half hour. What is it like half hour to hour to charge it? And then there's a lot of waste in battery packs and stuff like that. Yeah, there's there's definitely reasons to like not like electric cars, but I like the tech push. I really do. I, I'm glad to see. You know, outside of literally just the tech of having an electric car, th what they're doing now with, like, uh, camera systems, media consoles, like, they're finally just pushing all of it forward, where for a long time it was pretty stagnant. Now everybody's trying to outplay everyone. That's what, that's what Tesla was so good for. Oh, my God, that music. I've only had one I've only had one car since I turned 16. No, you got to you got to flip those numbers. <laughs> You've had 16 cars <laughs> inside of a year. <laughs> Nick would buy a car and then drive it. Like there's some cars that he definitely kept for longer and he always takes really good care of all his cars. But there were some I think he owned it for like a really, what's the shortest amount of time that you've owned a car for? He's owned a bunch. He's owned a bunch more than I have. He'll buy them and then just sell them back and, and get something else just because he's bored of it. Twenty four GM will be releasing the electric blazer. By that time, I'll be over the styling of the blazer. <laughs> I'll be looking for something else at that point. I think it was really cool and perfect for the time. And then and then I'll see what else at that. Shortest is about 14 months. Damn. Yeah, that's pretty quick. How long do you guys keep your cars for? Cars are meant to be destroyed. That's how we roll, drive the crap out of it. <laughs> like the, uh, so the Sienna van, that is something that I bought with the intention on keeping that thing for a long time. And so we'll see how that goes. But that is kind of like, if we're going to put a lot into this van, that is going to be the long-term family van. But with that being said, we have the happy family van. And then we have the extra vehicle that we really enjoy driving too. So that is the one that I can change out. Use as a demo car here, enjoy driving it more, um, you know, just looks cooler, that type of stuff. One year, one year no more. <laughs> Usually I can afford the next one I want or I don't drive until I have a choice. You know, I actually kept my Explorer for like a little over five years, paid it off entirely and then, and then sold it afterwards.
But there was a lot of times, like, I had to pick to buy it because of mileage, because it would drive around a lot for, for mobile. So I didn't really have the luxury of, like, leasing anything. Now, we don't really have to drive a ton, and we have two vehicles. Um, so I can, uh, I can swap out at least one of them a lot more frequently. What do you think about Carbon Plus? I see someone post in the Facebook groups. Yeah, I have it on my blazer right now. Um, the color is great. It was easy to shrink, like easy enough. It, it's pretty in line with C2 as far as working with it. There was one really alarming thing though. For whatever reason, I had it installed and then it starts to curl off of my windshield and that freaked me out. That was with the 50%. So I have to try it on a couple other things. So you spend 90K to avoid like 20K on income tax? Well, there's re definitely reasons to do it, for sure. You know what I heard? Here's a crazy thing. So one reason that stores do big Christmas blowout sales at the end of the year is they want to get rid of inventory. Um, so when you have product inventory sitting on the shelves, it's considered income. So you spend $100,000 on product. You have that sitting on the shelves. And then you actually pay taxes on that as income sitting on the shelves. So you actually, it's in your best interest to do a big blowout at the end of the year, get rid of all that product, and immediately rebuy it come the turn of the year and avoid paying taxes on it. That's, that's just a crazy concept. Because so, if you don't, you then pay taxes, lose margin, and then you sell it, and then almost break even at that point because it's still sitting on the shelves, so you might as well just get rid of it. That's nuts. Does the color look more like C2 or Pro Nano? Uh, Pro Classic, honestly. C2 leans a little warm in the darker shades. Pro Nano is definitely a little warmer. This is like, well, actually, I gotta look at the 5% again. It's, very, it's a really nice tint color. It doesn't really seem to lean one way or the other. It's just very neutral, darker. It's great. I love the look of it. I just hope I can install it. <laughs> Section 179 write-offs, I think, allows up to 1.5 million a year in equipment write-offs. That is way beyond my pay grade. But that would be good. But that's exactly what I heard from somebody, so maybe they need a different accountant. I was like, what the hell? <laughs> oh, maybe that's equipment versus, like, product. So, like, if you're selling products and stuff like that, maybe there's a difference there? I don't know. This is why, this is why I don't, I'm not the accountant. <laughs> Window tint tax season. So if it's, like, your film sitting on the shelf... I'd like I I'd genuinely ask your CPA. I don't know, but if it's uh, if it was like machining equipment and stuff like that for your business, it's probably different. Uh oh, they're trying to get in again. I gotta peel my back window. I think I'm gonna try and do my blazer back window, and just see what this film does on it again. But it's great. I have it on my windshield. And what's really interesting is even on like 40 degree days, you warm the inside of your car up, you can feel the sun cutting in on your windshield even in the winter time. Ceramic is so nice. This stuff really works. Obviously can't write off more than you made, but yeah, not sure about product, but equipment and vehicles most definitely. Yeah, that makes sense. So go ahead and buy that 911 Turbo S for the business car. Mm -hmm. Might as well buy it and then turn around and sell it at the beginning of the year. <laughs> is nano carbon good? Yeah, like, so all carbon is, is nano carbon. 
It just depends on who's you're using. It's just a marketing term. There's good and there's bad. GT500. I don't know. I might buy a Mach E. Actually, it's I'm probably too impatient. And if we've learned anything with batteries today, I'm uh, I'm not great with charging stuff all the time. So there'll be a morning where I have to go take my car out to work, and then it's not charged. <laughs> that would be a real bummer. <laughs> No, I'd get rid of the uh, I get rid of the blazer. So I, I we're in the middle of something right now, so I can't get I can't get rid of uh, the blazer right now. But come uh, come fall, like there's a lot of people that were getting bonus checks to turn in any leases that they had and then roll into something else, something better for the same price, or get a check and then whatever else that you wanted or just like turn it in entirely because they need inventory so i was I, like the, there's a strong potential for turning it in and then also the funny thing is with these classes um and the cost of rentals it basically cost me the exact same amount for a nice lease versus renting a car because that total rental was like $330, so it was a little cheaper uh, than, than what I initially was going to rent. But still, $330 every month on rentals for classes, basically a nice lease. Is Cavica and GeoShield the same? TintWiz has them both under Ceramic Pro. No, they're different. Some of their films come from the same place, or at least from what I hear. I don't know much, much about Cavica. I've heard they, their colorings are very different, though. So none of those companies are, are going to have identical films, though. They all get their own SKUs made. Um, but there'll be a lot of similarities with, with, with the films. Is Reno ceramic film worth it over Geo? Um, I don't think so. I'm pretty partial to Geo. Reno, I've heard a lot of iffy things about. They're supposed to be like nice. Like I'm sure you'll get really nice. Uh, films from them too but I just I heard some early failures from them so they're likely better now I, but I don't know I don't know enough about them what apps do you use to take appointments payments and also take payments over the phone TintWiz so TintWiz is part of that so the way that I handle proposals um, let me pull one up since we're done a little quick here. So I send out, um, I send out proposals to people and let me, let me pull up an example. Okay. This one I don't care about so much. There we go. All right, so every customer um, that fills out a proposal request off the site gets one of these. So if I click on view, this is basically what they get. So this was for a 16 Honda Accord um, that requested, I think, yesterday. Was it March 31st? Yeah. Um, so this is what my proposals look like right now anyways. Uh, this was for a full car without a windshield, but I add what windshield pricing would be in here too. So they get this in their email and they can see the different options between films. So we've got Pro Classic and then some examples of cars being done with Pro Classic. 
C2, and some examples. Same thing with Pro Nano. They get pricing. This is all particular to their vehicle. And then they select the film that they want to go with. And then they add any details, like what date would you like to come in? Um, and I'll try and best accommodate it and any other special requests or whatnot. But this is a good way to like, hey, how much to get my car tinted? These are the windows I want to get done. And then this is a snapshot of, of all the offerings that you, that you asked about. You can add more to this too. So you could do like um, extra services. You can tailor this any which way, add pictures, um, whatever you want to do. So this has been, this is what I, a big part of what I use TintWiz for. And then I also use them for my invoices, which I'm not going to show the invoices because those are customers that have actually paid. Um, they also have a great like scheduling calendar too. Um, but I don't use the scheduling calendar because I have a different system. As soon as they come out with deposits, I'll be using them though. So on my on my personal site, desktop. So if you go to deposit, so you basically you talk to me. Um, and then we figure out a date and a time, and then I send you a link to this page. You click book now, and then you simply, like, if we talked about Saturday the 2nd at 10 a.m., which, see, 10 a.m. is gone, so it's just not available. Saturday at 10 a.m., let's just say 9, then you click at 9 a.m., and then you'd leave a deposit that way. Really, really simple. Then it puts it on my schedule, and I know exactly what's coming in, what time it's coming in and you're already a paid deposit. So there's no questions if you're going to show up or not. And then for, uh, for taking payments, I use Zettle. So TintWiz isn't like a payment processor. They're integrating Stripe, I think, pretty soon, from what I hear. But this is what I use for like payment processing. So credit cards, and that's all through here. Pretty good rates. You have to take credit cards. I mean, you could say cash only, but I don't know. What is it? Here we go. Pricing. So 2.29, that's the fee, plus 9 cents per transaction. That's actually pretty competitive. There's a lot of them that were like 3 to like 3.5. Um, but it's become a lot more competitive, and they're like next day. I've had no problems with them. Yeah, Square, Clover. You walk into lots of like restaurants and, and just like legit places and they'll, they'll have like a Square or a Clover terminal or you know any of these. Zettle's through uh, PayPal, but this works just like one of those. Mm -hmm. Yeah, there's so many easy ways to do it. Set up free with Square or PayPal business account. They'll send a card swiper. Mm -hmm. Yep. Um, well, you're gonna want to do. You're gonna want to have a registered business for some of this stuff. So you could just sign up with Tintwiz and start using it. When you get into POS systems, though, like you, you need a business bank account and you need a couple of business things to then operate as a business or else, I, you, I mean, you might be able to use your personal stuff, but you don't really want to. And it's not hard. You just got to do it. <laughs> you can just get a LLC registered and then then you can open a, uh, a bank account. And then all your money then goes into your business bank account. So because Zettle, like these systems, PayPal had PayPal here, and I think they, they still have it, and that went into like a PayPal account, and that was kind of a way to get into it. But, yeah. Just do it.
Credit cards aren't me. I only use physical coins, like the 1800s. It's that, uh, oh, I forgot that comedian. But yeah, just toss like a big, heavy gold coin onto the table or just like a little sack of... So PayPal, Zettel, it's better rating on fees as a window tinting business. Your price tax are included in the price plus tax. Uh, well, it's overall transaction. So you're responsible for adding the tax onto the end. And they make these really easy to just like add tax. And then it knows the tax in your state. So if you need to charge a couple more dollars, then do it. <laughs> I bet he bites the coin to make sure it's real. I do. You need an EIN for a business account, I thought. Yeah, that's why you register as an LLC or whatever you want to do, and then open a business bank account, use your EIN for the business account, and then do your payment processing. It might sound scary, but... It doesn't feel any different when you have all this set up. It's just another bank account under your name. It's just that's where your business transactions go. If I charge 370 for a job, um, Square sends 360 to my bank after fees. Not bad. Yep. Mm -hmm. Yeah, exactly. If I was worried about 10 bucks, then just charge $10 more to the price. And there's actually a lot of shops that'll do this too to try and encourage more, more cash coming in. They'll do like a $10 discount on the job if you bring in cash. Because on all those fees, like that's, the, that's where like, you know, low 2% isn't bad as far as rates go, but three to 3.5% off of every transaction. So when you're charging $300 for a tint job, 3% of that versus 2.29, those start to make you know, over every transaction throughout the year, it makes a difference. Um, but then you just want to, you know, if, if that's a big deal, you could literally adjust it by a couple of dollars and, and totally offset any of that. I used to be a cash business, but once I started using Square, my tips have gone up a lot. You can set whatever percent you want, and it gives the option to choose. You can do that Laid too. Up Customs super chatted $19.99. Laid Up Customs? Why isn't it? Are they not on? Ah, I'm so sorry. Thank you for the 20. Damn. You're the only super chat of today too. Much appreciated, man. Cash is king. Cash isn't real. <laughs> Two very different comments back to back. Fees are deductible anyway. So, like, when you go into a gas station, you're paying with a credit card. Like, everybody suffers from these. There's a cost to everybody that is using payment processing. It's a giant problem with business. It's convenience, but everybody pays some transaction fees. So a gas station will have a minimum amount sometimes to run one of these things because then if they don't, then they're literally losing money between the cost of the product and the transaction fee. So they'll have sometimes like a minimum of like $10 to use a card. Otherwise, they're just losing money. I accept Bitcoin. <laughs> See, the thing is, you're still getting the same amount in crypto. It's just in a more complicated fashion. If you leave it sitting in an account, yes, it could go up or it could go down. So there's a little difference, but... In this economy, it's all just going down. <laughs> I started doing a thousand, until I started doing a thousand cars a year or more, I'm not worried about 3% difference in fees. Rather have ease of use. Exactly. Yeah, me too. For sure. 100%. Whatever is easiest for the client is, is what I'm going to do because if that was a problem, then I adjust my pricing. I'm not going to, I'm not going to cry over that little bit of money because what you, what you do in business should then comp for all your fees. Because there's more than that. There's the time the car is sitting here. There's the, the time I'm taking to do everything. Um, and, uh, you know, I've got heating. Um, I've got overhead. 
there, there's just a whole bunch of other stuff that's always in the background that like that might be a physical thing that you can see a difference very easily but yeah that little bit that's how they make their money too they get millions and millions of people doing three percent two percent wow But then you got to drive to the bank to deposit the cash to spend the 2% on a POS system. I agree. Actually, um, yeah, we uh, we put some in the bank and then some we keep on hand, too. I like putting it in a little stockpile and then forgetting about it. So all the cash that I get. It just I try not to even think about it, and then you look back and like, oh wow, we've got a bunch of cash. This is awesome. So it's like a different savings account for me. Is setting up an LLC easy? Yes, very easy. Um, it depends on how much you value your time too. So I went to what a lot of people do, and I went to LegalZoom because I don't know what the hell I'm doing. And then they did it all for me. And it was like, I don't know, five or $600, I think, which I could probably do it cheaper on myself. But again, time, and I don't know what the fuck I'm doing. So you can go through here, literally pick out your business name, and then go through all the LLC stuff. And then you, it'll just ask for like some personal information, some questions, and and then they send it off to the, your state government. Super. Alex Foxy super chatted ten dollars. The stuff sats up. New view tints. Oh wait, sorry, Alex. <laughs> Wrong person. Alex with the 10, thank you. This stuff adds up. It does, and that's how they make their money. They make their money off of the convenience. But these are all those business trade-offs. You're gonna get you're gonna get got one way or another. That's just how business is. How many ways you get got, that's up to you. And in this day and age, so many people use cards, use their phone and just whatever's easy. So if you either let them know ahead of time or they come in to pay for something and you're like, sorry, it's cash only. I guess you gotta go run to an ATM to come get your car. Like, come on, <laughs> just charge more. And then they'd probably be happier. I paid 90 to get my LLC and took like five minutes. Where'd you go? It's different in every state. Costs even more by me. See, these are those things that I can't even be bothered. <laughs> Hang on, let me get my reader. Okay. So, these are those those comments back to back. You guys want to know what property taxes are here? Property taxes um, here can be anywhere from 500 to like $1,000 per month. That's like normal now. So depends on where you live. Um, that part of the LLC stuff, I have no idea. I, I went to Tint Zoom, I filled out the things, boom, I got an EIN number with my LLC. They do all the processing thing. So basically, it, it depends on where you live and <laughs> a bunch of other things that I have no fucking clue about. But I have an LLC, so whatever. Holy shit, per month? Yes, per month. It's insane.
Um, I'm losing my train of thought here. California is like 800, I think, to register a business. Most every other state is just a couple hundred. I think it just depends. I think I, I know there's always premiums for these services, so how much they're getting on top of it, I have no idea. But I only had to do it the one time, so like whatever. And that's what they that's what they capitalize on. So the thing about paperwork is I hate it and I it hurts my brain to read it and understand what they're saying in a bunch of stupid legal terms and exactly what they need. And I would much rather just pay a service to fucking take care of it for me. Give me all the fields to fill out. I'll do it. There you go. Because you know what? I don't know where that money is anymore. It's gone. <laughs> it's all done. So if you want to look through your state things, it's probably not super complicated. And then you can just put the stuff together and file it yourself. And whatever the filing fee is, attach that because that's how they make their money. So there's filing fees to all of this too. Um, but yeah, this is uh, this is the card reader. So this this is free with Settle, and a lot of them will have card readers. So this just Bluetooths to your phone or a tablet. You leave that on Wi-Fi or your data plan. So I could take this anywhere, and I could charge people. Um, there is also this fancy little dock that came with it, or that I paid 50 bucks extra for. This thing is real dumb. This does nothing. This just keeps it off like off the desk, but it's confusing for people because there's this little line here that does nothing. So people think this is where you put the card, but you put the card there. Did you figure out how to do credit card over the phone? Yeah, I can do credit card over the phone still. Um, but my rates are terrible. So over the phone transactions are 3.5. But if I have to do it once in a while, that's fine. <laughs> what? Uh, so guys, Model Y roof, glass costs sixteen seventy six to replace through Tesla. Don't let your phone slide between the hatch and the roof, then close the hatch. Ooh, ouch, that's a bummer. Model Y roof glass. Yeah, because that's a big process, cleaning up all that glass, putting in a new one. Yikes. And then I tried to get, I tried to get Model 3, um... I tried to get Model 3 glass here for myself, and you actually have to use a Tesla pin, so I couldn't get one yet. Glass companies can't get it. Lance Benson Lance. super chatted $9.99. The guy teaching me to tint almost three years ago left leaving me to myself. Learned Lance a lot from with the you. 10, thank you. The guy teaching me to tint almost three years ago left leaving me to myself. Learned a lot from you. The guy teaching me to tint. Oh, almost three years ago, left leaving me to myself. Learned a lot from you. Oh, glad to hear it. Well, not that he left, but that you learned a lot from me. I appreciate the 10. Hope it's going well. RGC! RGC! like a toy. What, this thing? RGC super chatted five dollars. Great information. Money toy. Thank you, my man. <laughs> Thank you, my man. RGC with the five. Great uh, information. Thank you, my man. Thank you, my man. Yeah, you're welcome. No problem. I kind of learned, like, I learned a lot of this from just going through it when I was setting up my own stuff. It's not that complicated. It's not that scary. It's just something that you have to do. You just look into, literally go, I, I, this is how I'd figure it out too. How do I file an LLC in blah, 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 blah. And then there'll be companies trying to get you to go through their services and you'll probably be led over to your state websites and there'll be information on how to do it because they process lots of them every day and they just want some info from you, a filing fee, and then send it all over to them. 
and just making sure that paperwork is filled out properly. That's the, that's what you just want to make sure that you have right. So, I don't know what paperwork exactly I have to get, and I don't feel like printing it out and putting it in an envelope, sending it over there, whatever. So I just use a service. I haven't been here for a few streams. How was the class? The classes went awesome, or the class. The class went awesome. We have another one coming up in April. There's only two spots available. So that is going to be, what was that? I thought I heard my door. Maybe not. Um, the next one is going to be the 20, no, the 18th. 18th through the 20th. There's two spots left. Um, but they went really, really well. They were super helpful to everybody that was here. It was one, I always like, ah, three days doesn't seem like a lot of time, but when you're giving focused instructions, it makes a huge difference very quickly. When did you come over here for Tinder Battles? I was hoping to see you. I was running a class. I actually didn't know that I scheduled it for like the Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, right after Tinder Battles. But, like, we haven't been able to travel very much at all. Like, we, we drove down to Alabama on a family trip uh, to, see some fam <laughs> to see some family. Like, we want to go on some family trips this year, so we're, we're itching to do some of that. And that's more of a work trip. As, as fun as it would have been to hang out there, I just can't do it. Not yet. Nick! Nick Doolin. Nick Doolin super chatted $1.99. Hope you have a great rest of your day, Matt. Dang. There were no super chats. Now we have a handful of super chats. Thank you. Um, Nick Doolin, thank you so much for the two. Hope you have a great rest of your day. Thank you. You have family in Alabama? Yeah, I don't know how long they'll be there. So, like, my wife's uh, sister and and brother-in-law they're they're in Huntsville so we drove down to Huntsville and it's far enough that it's kind of like it takes it like eight nine hours so it's not terrible to get down there so we just powered through a night drove straight through pretty much to there Huntsville is nice. You check out the outdoor mall. I think so. The weather was a little up and down. So we went in, uh, when did we go? Shit. I'm trying to remember when we went. God, I can't even remember. Was this before Christmas time or is this after Christmas time? No, it was the January. We went in January, uh, December to January. So for like New Year's. Um, and there was like a couple days where it was like, really nice and like 70 degrees and then it snowed <laughs> and then so the weather was like this but yeah we did some exploring we went to uh i think we went to like a couple of malls we went to costco it was just nice to get out get out of state i wasn't looking to do anything any much of anything we were just like looking to go see family so and then so we're uh we're planning on going to uh to florida still um and then later this year Towards the end of the year, we're, gonna, we're going back to the Philippines, so we're planning for that. We just need a couple good family trips. We've been cooped up here for too long. But All righty, I'm going to shout out the Super Chats again because there was a whole bunch of them at the end. So big thank you to Nick Doolin, RGC, Lance, Alex, and Laid Up Customs. Thank you so much. Really appreciate it. There wasn't like anything today. <laughs> and then there was a bunch at the end. That's, I enjoy talking about all this extra behind the scenes business stuff. There's, there's a lot of things to know, but it's not really that scary either. It's just, it's in your best. When you're doing a tent business, it's best to take your business seriously um, and, and do some of those extra things, especially earlier on. So, you know, you're getting, doing everything through, like, uh, like PayPal, Cash App, stuff like that. Th they'll work, um, but you're still going to have to pay taxes and stuff on all of them, too. So you're, you're going to have to pay all that one way or another. 
Yeah, Florida. <laughs> Tinder battles next year in Florida again, by the way. Where in Florida? Are they doing it at the... I heard they had, like, a venue or something. Where are they doing it? See, I, I wanted... It would have been nice to go down for that time, too, and then, like, swing over for Tinder battles, but it is it is tough because it's, it's, like, still kind of like a work social thing, and there's so much of my time that also gets spent here for work. So, like, when we go somewhere, as a family especially, I don't really want to let my wife having to take care of my son all day and then, like, I can go and, and hang out with a bunch of tenors. It, it's just kind of, it should be a family trip. Some hotel in Orlando, not an island, just the name, I believe, still near. Oh, okay. I saw a post. I was like, what island? <laughs> That's cool. They had a lot of people. I heard it was really fun. Surprisingly, like the cleanest videos from Patrick, he had, uh, I think he used his phone, his phone with a GoPro, and it worked really RGC well. RGC super chatted $2. Peace there's, out, my man. There's two. RGC, thank you again for the two. Really appreciate that. Peace out, my man. I, um, Omni Amelia Island Resort, Orlando. Oh, okay. So an island resort or it's called Island Resort in Orlando. That's cool. That's pretty straightforward too. So there's a better chance this next year. I'm not 100% sure, but we were really like itching, <laughs> itching for just like a nice chill family vacation. It was a great time, hope you can come next year. Laid up Laid customs. Up customs super chatted one dollar and ninety nine cents. Dang. Thank you. Damn. There's so many super chats here right at the end. I appreciate it a lot. I gotta let this guy know his car's done. <laughs> Hope you get it. Come next year. I mean, I definitely would like to. It would be fun. It'd be a lot of fun. So we'll, we'll see how it goes. It's just between run, like the stuff that goes on here, you guys know how it goes. Running the stuff here, and it's, it's a break from doing the stuff here, and it all comes at a cost. So when I'm there, things aren't happening here. So it's kind of already like a vacation. But then it costs money to do that stuff too. Do you pay taxes on YouTube revenue? Yes. You pay taxes on everything. Any income stream you pay taxes on. If it's revenue, you pay taxes on it. <laughs> this is true. This is very true. Let me let this guy know. I gotta check. Lance Benson super chatted four dollars and ninety nine cents. Oh, let me stream do this. won't end yeah. if we keep sending super chats. Lance, <laughs> Lance with the five stream won't end if we keep sending super chats. It will sometime, but yeah, it takes longer to for it to end. Let me uh, let me do this real quick. Oh my God, laid up customs with the two. Yes, laid up right. customs super chatted $1.99. Oh my yes, God. Yes, right. They're so slow. They're not as fast as the, as the quick super chats that there's so much of a delay. But Nick, Nick with the two. 
Let's go, let's go, let's go, let's go. I swear it'll pop up. Sometimes it just happens too fast. 24 hour tinting stream, never. No, 24 hour streams are kind of nuts. It's more like a morbid curiosity. There it is. There it is. Nick Doolan super chatted $1.99. Never ending stream. <laughs> there it is. Nick with a two. Thank you. 24 hour streams are like people don't have enough stuff to do. And then people just pop in to see how they're holding up. And then especially when you get to like the next day, your viewership does this. And then it comes up here, it peaks, and then it settles back down, and then it starts to come back up towards the near the end of the 24 hours the next time. Like, so the same time, because that's when they started. It's, it's been really funny to watch. Tint studio after hours. It'd be boring. It's just me sitting here talking to you guys. I mean, when we have interesting things to talk about, that's different. So... With all the, uh, it, like, especially when we talk into, like, payment processors, invoicing, all those little extra things. Um, those are some things that we don't really talk about much. My friend never paid his taxes for a company he owned for 10 plus years. The IRS went after him and he lost his house. It was a big mess for him, not paying taxes for having a business. Yikes. It gets expensive. Especially like separating that type of stuff too. So that's one reason to do, to have a business and to kind of protect yourself. But, um, so you might lose the business, but you don't necessarily lose your house depending on how it is. But yeah. Yeah, it's just like IRS just wants to get their cut. And from what I've heard, they'll work with you, too. So if you just don't have all that money, they'll, they'll take it in payments. They'll work with you. They're probably not as scary as what they seem. But there comes a point that you definitely have to take care of that. You can fly low-key for a while, but, you know, charging, this is why you have to also charge more as a business. And it's kind of, well, like, as just... <laughs> If this is what you do to make money, you have to charge to make up for all these expenses and stuff. That's one reason why shops charge more than the guy down the road doing it out of his garage. And I say that really, there, there's people that are doing that very nicely and are very professional. And there's some people that are just, you know, hey, it didn't cost me much to get this film, so I don't have to charge much to do it. Well, then you learn later on there's all these expenses. Everything is chipping away at your bottom line. So do you file taxes with the state and IRS? You file taxes with the state and uh, the federal government. Yes. Federal taxes are always more. So, but customers, they don't care. <laughs> like, like they, they don't own a, they don't, some run businesses, whatever. Most people, just average consumer, you're going in to buy a good from a place. Like, you don't see it costs money to buy that, to package it, to put it on the shelf, to leave it sitting there on the shelf. Um, all that costs money. So for us, we have our overhead, we have our space, we have a place to put your car in, we have lighting, we have heating, we have bills. All that adds up, so then we have to charge appropriately and then we have to pay taxes. J. Bentley Austin 3 super shattered $9.99. No. No Let's go. Jay. Oh, and Matt, would trying to tint my car with ceramic for my first time ever tinting be a bad idea or you think it's possible? I'm pretty good at just about anything I try doing. Well. Jay. Jay Bentley. Uh, thank you so much for the 10. Let's go. Um, trying to tint your car with ceramic for the first time. I mean, if you're pretty confident, give it a whirl. Let me know how it goes. It's for some people, you know, I, I've been really impressed with seeing a couple of people on doors worked out really well. And then some people it, uh, 
it doesn't work out so well. It's very much a tedious skill that can take a lot of time and effort to learn. So if you're just trying with ceramic, there's more of a cost there. Most people end up ruining a lot of film when they're first practicing. So it might go on, all in the garbage. So would it, is it a bad idea? An expensive one. But if you're pretty, if you're that confident, I say go for it. Let me know. Let me know how it goes. Thank you for the ten. Not trying to be cocky. No, I I can appreciate that. It's one of those things where it's like, you see how most people are. If you have a better understanding of just how things work, you pay attention to that. It might not be all that bad. But yeah, give it a try. Let me know. I'm curious. All righty. I'm actually going to end the stream now. So I realized I don't have like much coffee left. That's why. But thank you guys for all the supers today. I really appreciate it, especially with these last ones. So Jay, Nick, Laid Up, Lance, Laid Up, RGC, Nick, RGC, Lance. <laughs> really, really appreciate it. Glad you guys like talking about this type of stuff too. It's important. Every once in a while, we'll run through it. Just ordered Glass Aid. Damn, Kevin, with the Glass Aid order. Thank you, my dude. I got to do some other stuff. It's the coffee. It's because it's cold and sitting here, and I have to get more. And I don't want to put on the GoPro. No, I actually have to do some other stuff. So I've been sitting here chatting for way too long. All righty, my dudes. You guys have a good one. Um, I think I'll be back on Saturday. I don't think I'm streaming tomorrow, so I'll be back on Saturday. But it's been like every day this week. Y'all have a good one. I will see ya. Bye.